Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about food adulteration. These questions have been asked many times. So, if you see in food adulteration, uh, the there are diseases, toxins and adul adulterants. Latherism, the disease latherism, the toxin is beta oxalyl amino alanine and the adulterant is kesari dal. Adulterant is kesari dal or lativus sativus is an adulterant. Second, for endemic dropsy, the toxin is sanguine, sanguinarin and adulterant is argimon mexicana oil. Then for endemic ascites, toxin is pyrolidicidin pyro, alkaloids and adulterant is crotalaria seeds or junjunia. For the disease ergotism, toxin is clavine alkaloids whereas adulterant is claviceps fusiformis. Then for so these are the diseases and food adulterants. Among all these, the one important thing which we have to learn is about latherism. Latherism occurs due to the toxin beta oxaloyl amino alanine and this is of two types. One we have neurolatherism, second we have osteolatherism or odoratism. Neurolatherism occurs in human beings whereas osteolatherism is present in animals. What is important here is it occurs due to kesari dal. So in human beings, if the human being takes diet containing 30% of kesari dal for 2 to 6 months, then that can lead to neurolatherism. It is most common in 15 to 45 years of age and this neurolatherism is in 5 stages. One we have latent stage, no stick stage, one stick stage, two stick stage and growler stage. That means here there is problem in uh, standing on straight leg in uh, neurolatherism. Then we have interventions for prevention and control of the uh, prevention and control of latherism includes one we have vitamin C prophylaxis. In vitamin C prophyla prophylaxis should be given we have to ban the crop, remove the toxin can be done by two methods, steeping method and power boiling method. And we can give education to the people to differentiate it and genetic approach can be given, uh, socioeconomic changes can be done. But the best intervention is removal of toxin and vitamin C prophylaxis and banning the crop. Epidemic dropsy, next adulterant. Epidemic uh, dropsy occurs due to the contamination of mustard oil with archimone oil. It occurs due to the toxin sanguinarin. This sanguinarin will interfere with oxidation of pyruvic acid. Because it interferes with oxidation of pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid accumulates in the blood, which will cause sudden non inflammatory edema of bilateral lower limbs. It also causes diarrhea, dyspnea and also it, it is toxic to heart and it causes cardiac failure. Finally, it can lead to death. This pyruvic acid can also cause glaucoma and it can also cause dilatation of capillaries leading to formation of sarcoids occurs in this sangu dropsy occurs in all ages this uh, this is proteinuria specifically loss of albumin can also lead to edema this inflammatory edema is due to proteinuria this uh, and epidemic dropsy occurs in all stages and the best test for detection of al argimon oil are two one we have nitric acid test second we have paper chromatographic test among these two paper chromatographic test is most sensitive then the second test which we have is endemic ascites in endemic ascites the toxin used is pyrolizidin alkaloids uh, is the toxin this pyrolizidin alkaloid is a hepatotoxin 
and the adulterant is crotalaria or junjunia we don't have any other points regarding endemic ascites then after this the next adulterant is ergotism ergotism occurs due to the claviceps fusiformis fungus the food items with tendency of ergotism include three that is b r s w bajra b for bajra r for ray s for sorghum and w for wheat these food items can cause ergotism so you will have to remove the ergot we can remove the ergot by floating them in 2% of 20% of salt water you will have to take these grains and put them in 20% of salt water if they float then they are good you can do hand picking of the ergot if uh, you can differentiate them or we can do air flotation technique the upper safe limit for ergot ergots is around 0.05 mg per 100 g of food material is the upper safe limit so to make to make sure that the food we eat is in good amounts is qualitative we have food standards one is codex alimentarius codex alimentarius is a joint food agricultural organization and who standard for international market markets so food standard are of india are based on this codex alimentarius but these are put forward by fao and who for international markets we have pfa standards pfa standards are laid under prevention of food adulteration act in 1954 in 1954 we have prevention of food adulteration act so this has some standards which aim to obtain a minimum level of quality of food stuffs attainable under indian conditions so here minimum level of quality is ascertained next we have bureau of indian standards in bureau of india indian standards is this is purely voluntary this bureau of indian standards expresses degree of excellence above pfa standards then we have agmark standards agmark standards are also almost similar to bureau of indian standards which have pure which are purely voluntary and which express degree of excellence among above pfa standards so these are the different standards which food standards which are available for making sure that the packaged food which we get are up to the mark in quality level so this is about the food adulteration thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you